And here we have an intro running into the verse. And what you've got there now, you see, is the drummer who recorded this um, will have recorded the entire song and all those extra, the different verses, the alternates, the endings, the beginning, whatever, the fills, are all recorded in one take, so it's almost impossible, usually it's impossible, to tell that you're running into a different loop. There is no change. I appreciate you're on a camera mic there, but you get the idea. So if I just mute those now, I've just run a couple of, a little demo here together, which is just of drums. Um, let's take the solos off there. Uh, and just to show you how we can piece it together. So in this case, I've put all these different things on a separate track each, pretty much. But it's very often I'll build an entire song with just, a, a, you know, might have seven or eight loops just for the intro, and it might have six or seven different ones for the chorus, and I'll put them on two tracks, maybe another one for the bridge if I fancy it, if I want to use different effects for different parts of the song. But otherwise, I put them on separate tracks. So we're going from an intro uh, into the verse, uh, these things, all the symbols, the rolls, and everything else are just spliced in. Now the band would be in, let's say, after that little fill. And we have an alternate verse pattern, because we're going to run into something else here now. Running into the chorus now. We've done a 16 bar chorus here. And then we're going to make our way back out into the verse. Different verse now, this is an alternate verse because it's second verse so maybe the band is a little heavier. Put some um, rolls and stuff in there at the end, little fills. Coming back into the second chorus now. So let's just imagine this is our end chorus. And it'll probably it'll be a double chorus. A little bit of expression in there just for the fun of it. And then we're running to a retarded end here. Now, first thing I want to do is just backpedal there and show you now. That's basically just stitching them together, pattern by pattern. But now you might want to make an adjustment. I don't personally like how this goes from the chorus that's very fluid and has the ride symbol. It goes to the retarded end, but it goes dry again. Listen. There. I don't like that. So what I can do, Becky, follow my finger if you would. What I can do here is I'm going to zoom in tight just where the two patterns join. We've got the normal uh, chorus and then we've got the ending retard. And I'm going to actually start the, the chorus um, to start overlaying that retarded end. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually bleed the two patterns together with a crossfade there. If you want to switch on crossfading, follow my mouse. It's that button there. And it'll crossfade for you by dragging the edges. So now we should have not had that dry ending. We'll still get the chorus running, but we'll still get the retarded ending. Let's... Okay, now what I had there was two patterns that were not perfectly aligned. So I'll just make sure that they are this time. Let's try that again. Should be this time. And I can also drag a little bit less out of that, of that retarded end. Just overlay it slightly less this time. You can see that's already getting better. I'd do a couple of a couple more squeezes here, and I would have it that you, nobody would really be able to tell. With a bit of tweaking, you get that perfect. With a band over the top, you would never notice. One other thing quickly here, then. Um, i just show you, you can also then, I, I've taken a roll from another part of my um, uh, Drums On Demand uh, library here. There's another one that's in this sort of uh, almost like a shuffle, a bit of a swing beat going here. So I've added an extra roll in here, which is a different drum kit and everything, but you can still make them work. I'll let you hear that roll. As you can hear it's got a lot more compression with a much more twangy snare. But um, if you lay them together and you get them the right volumes, then you're just adding colour. So we'll add that extra. This is without that roll first on top. And now we'll add the roll with it, that extra one. So now if you align that roll as well, you might only want just a tiny little bit at the very end of it. Um, you might want the last pair of toms, or you might just want a tiny little twang of the snare at the end. Then you can do that and just by dragging it to a shorter area, just by adding a little bit of colour, uh, you can make the thing sound more real. Things like that. So once you start mucking around with that, then really you can 
pretty much be your own drummer. And the thing about it is, is that it will always sound pretty good. Now I'll quickly take you to close with to um, a song that I was just finishing this demo stage two of uh, one of Elise's songs yesterday. Um, and I've used a mixture here of drums on demand, um, I've used Sony Acid and some Pro Tools drums loop, drum loops that I have. But basically the principles are the same. So we're, we're bringing it starting at the beginning of the second verse here with just some percussion. Percussion in this case is loops. Sometimes I record it live, but in this case it's loops. Uh, and then we're going to bring in the drums now over the top of the band. Hopefully you can hear what it's approximately going to sound like. solo the drum track now. What I'd always advise you to do is once you've got the drums open, um, start yourself a new, if I follow my finger Becky, start yourself a new um, bus here. You could just right click anywhere here and just put insert bus and it will give you whatever that is, in this case bus K, but I've got a drums one here. You can label it and then assign all these here are drum tracks for this particular song. They go from there uh, right up to there. Um, all of those are drums of various kinds, uh, fills, rolls, um, verses, choruses, symbols, things like that. Um, and then I put them all on the same bus and I want you to hear now what you can do then with Sony Acid. You may not have been able to do with your previous recording, which is simply to use some um, EQ or some compression on the entire drums mix then. Uh, so I'm going to go back to where I was. So I've soloed drums, I go to my effects, I'm going to insert a compressor here, a track compressor, and um, listen how it changes the sound. Obviously I can adjust that to any kind of amount. But now if I take this, the drums back off solo again, you'll hear what that's doing to it in the mix. You can hear you've got a totally different sound, well you may be able to hear, you've got a totally different sound there. Take the compressor back off. Back on. And that's the brilliance about using loops, is that generally the drums are all ready to compress, or they've already been compressed, but you can change your compression, your EQ, your reverb on them to make even a totally different sounding kit. And because they're so brilliantly mixed, um, then it will always react properly with compression and EQ and everything because they're so, so, so well balanced. You won't have to mess around any longer trying to get drums to sound a particular way, toms to sound clean on the rolls and um, getting your reverb levels right and things like that. It'll just come so much more naturally by doing this. There are limitations to it, but I would heartily recommend it. Uh, any other questions, give me a call at any time. Lots of goodbyes. Becky says goodbye as well. She doesn't want to appear on cameras. Her and cameras don't mix. Love you guys. See you soon, hopefully. Bye-bye.